know, we, I was the one here preaching last Sunday. Uh, Jim, thank you for filling in. It's kind of one of those things when you wake up Saturday morning and you're thinking, man, I feel worse today than I did yesterday. And then you're thinking, if it's going to be like this tomorrow, uh, I don't need to be here. So you start calling around and you make the appropriate phone calls and uh, hope that there's somebody there who has a lesson prepared or who can have a lesson prepared in enough time. And fortunately, here we've got a few men who uh, do a very good job. They do an extremely good job and we're very fortunate. So thank you. If you're watching this morning uh, live or if you watch this on uh, the replay later on on Facebook, guys, we want you to please comment, like us, follow us. If you're here, I don't know if we say it enough. Guys, we need to be sharing this message. We need to be sharing the messages constantly that were presented. But knowing a real, I've been noticing a really neat trend. Um, I know that for some time we had some difficulties with audio, and hopefully we've had that ironed out for the last several weeks. But one of the trends I've noticed is that our viewership has been climbing. And it's great to see that. And I think y'all even know that. Because sometimes we look around and we go, man, I, I, I wish more people were in here, and I do. I wish those of you who are watching this online would, would be able to come and be able to attend here at Southside. Because there is no better place to be than with the family of God. But I also want each of us to understand there are people that want to hear God's word. And they're seeking Let's go to God this morning in prayer. Father, we, we come before you this morning just lifting our hearts up to you. Father, we, we know there's so often that we make mistakes, that we, we're not perfect people. But Father, we also know our desire is, is to be children who follow you. Children who are after your word, Father. Help us to be that. This morning, as we look at the lesson, open our eyes, Lord. We beg of you to open the eyes of our hearts. Help us to, to see who you are. Help us to know you and, and to see your word. Father, help us to, to see how to live and to walk in, your, in the world which we are in. Father, help us to, to understand and to know and to see that we're not alone, but that you surround us. Father, ultimately, help us to see the way you see. Not at the outward appearances of man, but, Father, the hearts of men, help us to see those. Be with us this morning in this lesson. It's in your son's name we ask this. Amen. Open the eyes of my heart. Help me to see the way you see. I've given a lot of thought in. What I want to do to start this lesson off right, I don't want to really kick off this idea of seeing and not seeing. And I, I thought about, you know, well, we can talk about blind and not blind. And we see that mentioned enough in the scriptures. But I think there are some things that we miss when we talk about no sight and then sight. You see, because there's a lot of people out in the world <coughs> who can see, but they miss all sorts of things. There is, in the world of blindness, something called a person who is visually impaired. Maybe you're not totally blind, you're, you're partially sighted. And you'll talk to a person who's partially sighted 
And they'll let you know, yeah. I don't see it as other city. And they use many of the same techniques and tools that a person who is blind will use. So much so that the uh, communities <coughs> of people who are blind will encompass people who are visually impaired and they, they encompass it with the term blindness. But you see, as people who nor see normally, most of us don't understand any of it. Just, I'm going to be frank about it, we don't get it. We don't get that a person can see, but maybe they don't see the same way we do. They don't get that a person can actually see, but they're going to miss the little details. <coughs> don't get it. Is that you? Is it me? Do we not get that? The truth is we don't. We, we often will make comments not realizing what we're saying and not realizing how hurtful we can be. Well, can't you see that? I can see that. I would have made that mistake. You see, I grew up with those issues. I grew up with vision that corrects out good enough. Good enough that, you know, from the distance, yeah, I, I don't look like I have a problem. But you start paying attention and you'll see, yeah, I look at worrying more closely, I look at things more closely, and you really start paying attention. You'll say, there, there's some things that I just visually miss. There's a reason I absolutely cannot stand video games. And it's not that I'm against video games. It's because video games were designed by people who see perfectly or who see normally. And there's never any thought given to a person who doesn't see normally. And so video games are very visually Tedious. And for someone with a vision that I have, it, it's not worthwhile. It runs me up the wall and I get annoyed with it. Because I miss little things. That even in the real world, I don't miss. That's all I don't like. You see, when you're going down the road and everybody asks, well, how, how can you drive? Because I can see the cars in front of me. I can see the driver weaving in their lane in front of me. I also can tell you, typically, if a driver, without even looking at their turn signals, is going to make a left turn or a right turn. Do you know, as drivers, we have bad habits, and if we go to turn left, you know what we do? We get all the way to the left of the lane. And if we go to turn right, you know what we tend to do? We tend to go all the way to the right of the lane. There's things that we can tell. How can you do this? How do you, how do you do whatever you do? You see, there's tricks that we learn. But the truth is, there's a whole lot that we miss as well. Not because we want to miss it, but because that's life. There's a lot that we miss and so we really start to understand when, when Jesus is talking about this idea of being able to see, but not being able to see. Because you see, we can see, but man, there's just some things that you just visually miss. Little cues, facial cues, expressions, eye contact. You know those annoying little smug looks that people give you? Sometimes we miss those things. It's the reason I get bored with some TV programs that are filmed in really dark settings because there's a lot of things visually that are going on in those dark settings that I just simply miss and I get bored with. 
It's the reason in 1989 this movie came out that everybody adores called Batman. When it was re released. And it's the movie that killed Batman for me. Y'all realize that? Because nobody thought that, oh yeah, there's a lot going on visually, but not everybody's going to be able to tell us. Well, so you see, the same thing happens in our walk with God. You see, oftentimes as people, we see everything out there. Or we think we see everything out there. But the truth is we miss a whole lot of little things. <coughs> we miss the details. And the details are important. Having eyes to see and they, they cannot see. And it's not saying that you can't see at all. It's saying that you have eyes to see but you're not seeing the details. Because if you could see the details, you would stop. And you'd realize, this isn't good. So this morning we enter this lesson. God, open my eyes. Help me to see the way you see God. I think that's often a prayer that maybe we ought to be uttered on a consistent basis. God, open my eyes. Help me to see the way you see. God, help me to know you better. Help, help me to, to see you and, and to know you and to understand your word, God. David in that 119th Psalm writes this in the 18th verse. He says, open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of your law. That was David's prayer and David's petition to God. God, open my eyes. God, help me to see the wondrous things out of your word, out of your law, out of what you teach. <coughs> Help me to see you more clearly. That's what David's asking. God, help me to see you. Not only help me to see you, God, but help me to understand you. And understand your way, God. That's a petition. Each and every one of us should be making me God. God, help me to see you more clearly. We live in a world that, that, that seems pretty clear to us, right? But yet we get messages all the time. It's like, oh, you, you missed something here. You don't know what you've been reading over there. We live in a world that wants us to think that maybe that this God of the Bible isn't really real. And we've missed something. Or we have people out there who want us to, to think and to believe that maybe we've missed something and maybe we've read into God's Word more than what God ever intended. You see, a God of love wouldn't, wouldn't look down on any particular people, would he? It's often the common we hear. Yet God tells us what living righteously is, and he tells us what living in sin is. He teaches us how to care for each other. But he also tells us that we 
cannot allow sin to go and live and thrive within us and for us to say nothing You see, if you think that's the case, maybe you've never studied the book of 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians. That's what Paul's dealing with. Paul's dealing with a church that, that's allowing sin to run rampant. And the fact that they need to be dealing with it. You need to get themselves right. And get themselves straight. And deal with the problems that are at hand. It's not that we are afraid to talk and afraid to love and afraid to care about others. It's that our desire is to see the way God sees. To love the way God loves. And to encourage the way God encourages. So open my eyes that I may behold your wondrous things out of the law. As David says. I open my eyes so I may see your word. God, give us light in this darkness. That should be the next part of this plea, this, this plea that we have to God. God, give me light in this dark world that we live in. But the world's not dark, it's bright and sunny outside. I wonder if the Pharisees and the Sadducees in the day of Jesus had that very thought. What are you talking about, Jesus? Wait and see pretty clear. You say you're bringing light to dark. What, what do you mean? What are you getting at, Jesus? His word, what he says is right and what's wrong. 
What God says is what's sin and what's not. And so that's where you learn what sin is. If you don't know God and don't know his word, you don't know what sin is. Did you realize that? And so there, Paul's to be pre is to go out to preach, and he's to go out and to say, "Hey, well, let me show some light on, shed some light on this subject. Let me help you to see that what you're doing is sin. It's it's wrong." Some people are going to love him for it, but a whole lot are going to hate him for it. Why? Because you see, when we start shedding light in darkness, sometimes we see things that we don't want to see. Sometimes we find out the things that we are doing that we think are okay and awesome are horrendous and heinous before God. And we don't want to hear it. And we don't want to see it. And so we shut it off. If you don't believe, start looking around in the society in which we live. When we, as a society, become offended, and someone says, wait a minute, what you're doing is wrong. And say, well, don't tell me that. Don't tell me it's wrong. Don't tell me it's sinful. Who are you to judge? Look around in our society. Our prayer needs to be that God open our eyes. Open our eyes to the darkness so that we may see the light and so that we may show others and shed light on others. Not because I want to point somebody out for being in sin. But because my whole desire is so that they too might see the light and know Christ. See, I, I think for way too long we've kind of had this idea. I know what's right and I'm going to tell you what's right. And you're going to have to listen to me. And we've shed light looking for sin. Not because we want people to know what's right, but because we like to find sin. But yet God said, hey, no, you need to shed light so that they can see their sin and then they can know it's sin and know to turn from it to remove that sin out of their lives. We're still head over up there. Because the next one's God, open the eyes of our hearts so that we may see. God, open the eyes of our hearts so that we may see. For Paul writing there in Ephesus says, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called. <coughs> what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the same? God open the eyes of our hearts so that we may see, and that goes right with what I was saying, we need to be able to shine light in the darkness and open the eyes of the hearts of men, not because we want to condemn the world, but because we want the world to know who God is and what righteousness is, because we want the world to know, as Paul says,
Samuel gives us this view. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at the appearance or at its physical stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as men sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. God, help me to see the way you see. So not only be help me be able to see in the darkness, but God, I want to see the way you see. I, I don't want to judge anybody from their, their physical, their weight, their stature, or the, the things that they do on the outside. God, I want to be able to see men's hearts. This was what God told Samuel when he was to anoint a new king, a king to replace Saul. You know, the, the, the king who, who was picked because he met all the outward appearances. And so Samuel's going to anoint one of Jesse's sons and he sees the eldest and oh, that, that must be the right one, right? He's tall, he's handsome, he's smart. And he works all the way through the sons, and most of us know the story to till he gets to the end. Don't you have any more? Yeah, I've got the one in the field back there. That's the way it reads. Now I've got my youngest. I've got the one out in the field back there. Are you sure you want to look at him? I'm not sure he's the one you want to consider. He's too impetuous, probably. You ever read David's uh, exploits? I, I'm sure Jesse's sitting there thinking, um, you don't want David, God. He's going to lead us into a war. <laughs> you understand, this kid takes on mountains, this kid takes on bears and lions. He's a little kid, but he's still taking them on. We don't need him. David's going, not David, but Samuel's going, I need to see him. And God saying, so what I want. I see his heart. Later on, we'll see in the scriptures that, that David was a man whose heart was after God. Whose heart desired God. Our prayer needs to be this, that, that we see as God sees. And we look at men's hearts the way God looks. Finally, as we look at this lesson, I want us to look at this. God, help us to see that you're always with us. So not only help us to see and help us to have light and darkness and help us to see the hearts of men and help us to see the way you see. But God, help us to see and to know that you are always with us. You see, I think oftentimes in the church we hear that God is not right there with us. We'll look around and maybe we see people who are in the worship service and when we become kind of beat down about it, or we see people who aren't obeying the gospel and it kind of beats us down. So much so that we would get this mentality of, I don't know if it's worth it anymore. Why am I even coming to worship service? Or, or God, why am I even doing what I'm doing? Look around. God, help us to see that you're always there with us. I can't think of a time where this was ever more so than out of 2 Kings. There in chapter 6 and verse 15 it says, And when the servant of the man of God rose up early in the morning and went out, behold, an army was with horses and chariots was all around the city. And the servant said, Alas, my master, what shall we do? And he said, Don't be afraid, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Then Elisha prayed and said, O oh Lord, please open the eyes 
that this young man and helped him to see and it says in it, he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elijah. You see, Elijah's servant was out there, and he, and he said, oh, what do we do? We're surrounded. God, how, how, can, we, how can we be your servant? You, you've allowed us to be surrounded, and he comes into Elisha, and Elisha says, you got to understand, you got to look and see the way God sees. You need to understand and see that, that God's with us. Elisha's prayer is, God, open his eyes, allow him to see that you're with us. And oh boy, does he see it. So much so that he, he saw the physical horses and chariots, but then he sees what God has surrounding him on the mountain. It changes the way this young man sees God. It changes the way that this young man sees Elisha. Yet I think there's a truth there even for us today. For oftentimes as followers of Christ, we become beat down and we start worrying about every little thing. We worry that somebody's going to, to bust into the worship service with a gun, or, or we worry that, that somebody's going to take money from us if we give to the wrong person who's homeless, or we worry that, that somebody's going to try to take our Bibles away, or we worry, we worry about so many little things. And the truth is, we need to open our eyes and pray that God opens our eyes to see that God is with us, and that he has never left us. We need to be praying to God. God, open my eyes so that I might see. God, open my eyes so that I might see. Can we see what God desires? Can we see the darkness that is around us? Or are we stumbling our way through life? Can we see that God desires us to be light in a dark world? And are we providing that light to the world that's around us? Not because we want to expose sin, but we want others to know what sin is so that they too may live in righteousness according to God's word. Are we praying that God opens our eyes? The eyes of our hearts to look the way God looks. And to understand that God is with us. And that he has not left us. Nor has he forsaken us. This morning I want to offer that invitation to you. If you're here, if you've not put on Christ, what better time than today? If you need prayers in the church, would you come? As we stand in the same time. And the fountain breathes for you.